Hello everyone, Josh from What Culture here, and The Last of Us has just aired episode 4, and unlike episode 3, which wildly diverged from the source material, this one sticks much closer to it. Now immediately we start with a scene where Ellie and Joel are searching for gas. And we have a little bit of a back and forth about exactly how Joel is able to siphon the gas from these long destroyed cars before Ellie pulls out the iconic joke book from the game and starts cracking wise. We then cut inside the car with Ellie and Joel on the road and get a scene that is just one for one from the game with Ellie finding Bill's porno mag and clearly winding up an uncomfortable Joel with it. Sticky pages and all. Now, it was great in the game, and it's great here as well. Not only by being a funny scene in and of itself, but for further establishing one of the core themes of the episode. That being Ellie melting Joel's harsh exterior through her distinctively kid-like humour. There were some great adaptations here, and overall, this introductory sequence definitely gets an up for establishing the core themes of the episode to come. Now we actually get to see the joke book in two more scenes, and every single time it's brought out, it kind of brings down one of Joel's barriers. In the second scene, when the pair are camping out in the woods, Joel actually hits Ellie with the punchline first, seemingly very pleased with himself. Now this interaction not only adds a little bit of humour again into the script, but it also allows Joel himself to subconsciously acknowledge just how protective and fond of Ellie he's becoming. It's no coincidence that after this, he immediately finds himself unable to sleep and standing guard with his rifle, even though he himself just stated how unlikely it would be for anyone to find them deep into the wilderness and at night. Again, it's great storytelling to show Joel actually caring for this girl without actually just having him say, you know what, Ellie, I'm actually becoming a little bit fond of you. In fact, I would probably kill for you, so I'm gonna stand out right there and keep watch. Now, the third use of the joke book comes right at the very end of the episode, and this is by far the best use and definitely the best scene in the whole episode. Now at this point, Joel and Ellie have been through hell together. She's shot someone, they've been shot at, and they've been chased down by a literal militia. A militia that has big scary trucks with run spray painted on the front of them. However, after all of this, the third time that the joke book is brought out, Joel actually lets himself laugh at the terrible joke about diarrhea running in your jeans, and as a viewer, you get the sense that this is probably the first time this dude has laughed in about 20 years. It's a cathartic scene, both for the characters and the audience, and it nicely represents just how far they've come in the space of the episode, and just how much their relationship has grown over the course of this 40 minutes. Now I focus so much on the joke book in the early part of this video, because this absolutely is one of the elements from the game that could have been brought over to the TV show just for a little bit of fan service, included just as a wink and a nudge, but without much depth. Instead, though, the writers have implemented it three different times, not only to inject humour into the scenes, but to demonstrate a change in the relationship between these characters. It's great writing, and in my opinion, definitely how you should be adapting elements from the game into the TV show to give them more weight and depth, so it gets an up from me. Now, on the drive to Kansas, we also get a little bit more backstory on how Joel ended up in Boston in the first place. Similar to the games, he talks about how he and his brother, along with Tess, fell in with a gang of hunters, and later he shrugs off the question as to whether or not that means that he killed innocent people. This conversation works to deliver backstory, sure, but also to establish a key part of Joel's motivation that will absolutely come into play in later episodes. For instance, he says that Tommy is foolish to try and fight for a better world or be the hero, and instead the only hope in a hopeless world is to keep going for family. And understanding that this is his thought process is absolutely going to be key in understanding some of the actions that are yet to come in the story. And without spoilers, even some of the actions yet to come from characters in season two. Likewise, he refers to Ellie as cargo in this scene, but by the end of the episode, we know that's not true, and he's definitely starting to view her as family. So yeah, it's great character building, and it definitely seeds further storylines, so this conversation gets an up. I think it's going to be really important going forward. Now, for the real inciting incident of the episode, though. That, of course, being the hunter ambush in Kansas City this time, rather than Pittsburgh from the game. Now, while I do lament the omission of Joel's excellent he ain't even hurt line that's included in the game version of this scene, it's still a great adaptation and really sells the threat that the humans can bring to the show. 
Joel's concern for Ellie in this shootout is palpable, while the action scene in general just shows you how capable and cold Joel can be when he needs to be, when his life is in danger and the people he cares about are about to get shot. However, this brings us to another major deviation from the games, and that's how Ellie's first kill is portrayed. Like in the source material, Joel is blindsided by an enemy who starts choking him out. Ellie nervously shoots the guy in the back before immediately having to reckon with her actions as this guy, this kid essentially, starts pleading for his life as he's bleeding out. Now, I'll talk about how this works as an adaptation in a second, but judged in a vacuum just on the merits of the TV show, this is an absolutely excellent scene. She saved Joel's life, yeah, but the writers don't let her forget that she took a life in order to do just that. The guy's wails and immediate bargaining while face to face with his own mortality is heartbreaking, and Ellie's face says it all, with tears streaming down it. And like the guard that Joel murders in episode one, I think this is another great example of what Craig Mason was getting at when he said he wanted to turn the NPCs from gameplay obstacles to real human beings who feel like real human beings. There's no remorse for the man killed in the game, not really, but here both Joel and Ellie are faced with the human being that they're about to put down, and one of them have hardened themselves to this act, while to the other it's a new experience for them, or newish as Ellie alludes to. And in another deviation from the game, Joel here doesn't actually berate Ellie for disobeying his orders and not staying in cover. And for me in the TV show, this change absolutely works and makes sense for where we're at in the story. As Joel's fatherly instincts kick in again, and he's all too aware of the weight of killing another person, especially for someone as young as Ellie. Sure, Joel empathizes with his companion in this scene, and it definitely works for where they are in the story at this point. At four episodes out of nine, at this point you need their relationship to start feeling more parental and empathetic. It also works because previously the episode has done so much to remind you just how young Ellie really is and how innocent she really is despite what she's been through. The giggle when Joel is pulling the gun in her hands, the joke book, the porno mag, I think it all does a number on Joel to remind him that while, yes, yeah, she is hardened to an extent, she's still being robbed of her youth. So yeah, this change definitely gets an up. Now, hold your horses. Does that mean that I'm saying that the game version is bad or that this TV version is better? Absolutely not. They're just two different mediums. It makes sense for the characters and structure of the story there, while this change scene, for me, makes more sense for where the characters are at this point in the TV show, and how violence is portrayed in this story compared to how it's portrayed in the first game. I also have a theory on how this might come into play in future episodes as well, with Joel potentially even repressing some of the empathy that he's starting to show at this moment in time, but I'll leave that for a future episode. Now, with the introduction of the Hunters, we also get the first look at their leader, Kathleen, played by the always excellent Melanie Linsky. Now, this backstory is mostly setting up plot points that will be explored in the next episode, but it's still interesting here, showing us a group of people who have rebelled against the tyranny in the QZ, only to find themselves become just as violent and just as oppressive as the people they were supposedly liberating themselves from. I'm really eager to see how this is explored in the next episode, and hopefully it is. However, I've got to admit right now, I'm not entirely sure on Melanie Linsky's Kathleen. Again, I absolutely love this actress and other stuff she's been in, but she gets so little screen time in this episode that I'm definitely going to have to wait until her story is finished before deciding one way or another. I am pretty sure that her characterization is going to play into the idea that she's been thrust into this leadership position, presumably after the death of her brother who was previously in charge, and that explains why she seems to be in over her head, but again, we're gonna have to wait and see on that, so this gets neither up nor down. I know, I'm just completely breaking the conventions of this video. That said, I will give a big up to Tommy's actor from the game, making the jump to live action, playing Kathleen's second in command. This guy just looks incredible. Look at that beard. I am so jealous of that beard. When I go gray, I want to look like that. Either way, I love how the actors from the games are being incorporated into the TV show, so again, this gets another up. While we're talking about potential negatives though, I do want to say that while I love Joel's quip about his back hurting after walking up 33 flights of stairs, I have no idea what this guy was thinking with that glass perimeter he set up. He's been so careful until right now, so to not barricade the door and to sleep right in view of it, 
I don't know, man, stuff like that usually wouldn't take me out of the story, but the writers have otherwise been so careful about showing these characters being so careful. So yeah, that combined with Henry and Sam just sneaking up on them, it felt a little bit contrived, even though it kind of was set up with Joel only being on his right ear. Still, I'm gonna give it a down. Likewise, this might sound a little bit sacrilegious because it's very much setting up the next episode, but I could have done with just a smidge more action within this 45 minutes. Again, I by no means just want action for action's sake, but I think this episode in particular could have done with one more set piece of sequence that really emphasized the militia closing in. Yeah, we get those great scenes of them kicking in the doors of residential houses, but Joel and Ellie kind of feel a little bit too separated from the action after that great first shootout. For me, it just doesn't quite convey the feeling that they're desperate in just scraping through, avoiding being gunned down in the street by this crazy oppressive force. So for now, this gets it down, though I am confident that we will see way more action in episode 5. Also, I want to mention this, I can't give the show itself a down for it because it's not at all the show's fault, but I'm so sick of the teasers for the next episode or even the social media promotion for the next episode spoiling things that are going to happen. Like in this episode, one of the coolest parts I thought was them establishing that kind of infected ground that looks like it's about to give way. And then I immediately went on Twitter and saw HBO posting the poster for the next episode, which if you haven't seen it, I won't spoil it now, but it kind of gives away what the hell's going on with that. And I didn't like that. So no doubt because it's not the show's fault, but come on guys. Overall though, this was a really strong episode, but it absolutely was the first of two parts. Still, it's absolutely worthwhile because of just how good the development of Ellie and Joel is, and I've been waiting for episodes to see them properly start to connect, and it definitely pays off here. They get every beat of that right for my money. But I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What did you think of episode four of The Last of Us? And what do you think is going to happen going into next week? Or I guess at the end of this week because of the Super Bowl. <clears throat> I'm not going to pretend I know what a Super Bowl is. It's just there. Uh, means I get the episode early. So there we go. Let me know. And while you're down there, if you could, please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to What Culture Gaming for more lists, news, and editorials like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.